Povidone iodine is a widely used disinfectant. It contains the element aldine, which has a lot of unique properties. Today, we decided to mess with the povidone iodine in a few different ways. We've got a few bottles of povidone iodine from a local drugstore. It really cost us quite a fortune, and this is how much we've managed to gather. Let's start with our first reaction, the elephant toothpaste. We added an excess amount of sodium hydroxide pellets, which can be found as caustic soda. Then we added around 450 milliliters of distilled water to make a strongly basic solution. 100 milliliters of povidone iodine was transferred to a larger beaker, followed by an excess amount of sodium hydroxide solution. Upon the addition of a strong base, the iodine is converted to its ion form, while the water-soluble povidone is precipitated out as a water-insoluble polymer. As the concentration of the brown iodine decreases, the solution is slowly decolorized, causing the solution to take on the yellow color of the insoluble polymer. We brought it onto a hot plate and boil it down to around 150 milliliters. As the volume of the solution decreases, more of the polymer was precipitated out, coagulating into a large chunk of gooey solid, leaving the solution cloudy. We filtered off the solution and messed with the gooey polymer a bit. It's like a mixture of rubber band and Play-Doh, but it was a lot more disgusting. A portion of the filtrate is transferred into a smaller beaker. It was put aside for the time being. Into a 2 neck round bottom flask, we poured in a very small amount of hydrogen peroxide, followed by some soap. For the reaction to begin, we poured in our sodium iodide solution. Immediately, a large amount of foam rushed out of the flask. Obviously, I did a really bad job in calculating its projection distance and a worse job in predicting the amount of foam that's being produced. This is a decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide catalyzed by sodium iodide. A large amount of oxygen gas is released, which is then trapped by the soap creating a lot of foam. Also, the reaction is exothermic, so please be aware of the heat despite its innocuous appearance. Our next reaction is called frothy beer. It was accidentally discovered when we were trying to make iodine crystal a long time ago. Into our previously prepared sodium iodide solution, we added 150 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, followed by 13 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. After that, an excess amount of hydrogen peroxide were added. The solution turned to a dark brown as the iodine was being precipitated out. Then, it slowly reverted back to a bright golden yellow, resembling the color of beer. Zooming in a bit, you'll see some bubbling occurring in the solution. But still, it's not frothy beer. To give it a foamy appearance, we added in 15 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. Immediately, you can see some vigorous bubbling taking place, as if a beer head was surfacing. The bubbling was due to the release of a toxic and acidic gas, so please do not repeat the experiment even with the guidance of a parent. Now comes our third experiment, the famous iodine clock reaction. To begin with, we crush some vitamin C tablets into powder. Then, weigh out 0.5 grams of the powder. Into the first beaker, the powder was made into a solution by adding 100 milliliters of distilled water. Then, we added 12 milliliters of povidone iodine. We then measured out 0.4 grams of cornstarch and added it into another beaker. It was then followed by 60 milliliters of distilled water and 100 milliliters of 6% hydrogen peroxide. The solutions in the two beakers were mixed together at once, and we kept on stirring it. A lot of chemical reactions were happening all at the same time. And when a certain species of reaction has run its course, the colored species will take over the reaction, thus creating the delayed reaction. This is the Undergraduated Chemist. Thanks for watching.